Hey guys, my name is Rob from Urban Leaf, and in this video, I'm going to show you an experiment we ran that compares four of the most popular hydroponic techniques that are used in dozens of commercially available units. We've got some time lapse videos, pictures, and in the end, we'll go through the data on the plant size, fruit yield, water use, and temperature. If you're new to hydroponics and want to learn a little bit more about the systems you see here and how they work, then I'd recommend also checking out our separate video that goes through all of them in detail. So in this experiment, we set out to test five different systems, four hydroponic plus one soil based as a control sample. Firstly, on the left hand side, we have a drip system. What you can see here are our three different model plants including cherry tomato, which is a model for flowering fruiting plants, lettuce, a model for leafy greens, and beet, which we use to represent root crops, set up in each of the five different systems. In the drip system, we're using clay pebbles to anchor the plant and delivering the water by a HDPE gardening irrigation system with three emitters. We set this up to deliver water three times per day for 15 minutes each time. Next is the deep water culture, or DWC. In this trial, we are aerating the water with bubbles delivered by an aquarium tube and an air stone. In the middle, you can see our aeroponic setup, in which we are using one ultrasonic fogger. These foggers were purchased from a specialty supplier for around $30 each. The fourth setup is our crack key sample. In this tub, we basically just have the still water with nutrients. You'll notice that all the tubs are, are the solid opaque plastic and the reason is that keeps the light out of the reservoirs so it reduces the amount of algae growth we experience. Lastly, on the right hand side, we have soil. We put um, some miracle Grow potting mix into three free draining containers, aka water bottles with holes in them, to use as a control. I watered it by hand, but truthfully, I may have missed some waterings and let it get too dry every now and then. So all up, we ran this experiment for three months. Some of the limitations and problems we ran into that might skew the results include the plants in the DWC with bubbles died early. This wasn't intentional, but as we learned, the system goes through water really, really rapidly. The other limitation is that some of the plants were not given enough time to reach their full potential. For example, the tomato plant in the drip system on the left grew very, very large, but it was slower to flower and we ended the experiment before it was given time to have all of its flowers produce fruit. Finally, there was an element of human error here. Guilty. Life happens and I wasn't able to water the soil of the control every day. So what did we learn? We ended up having the most consistent and comparable data for the tomato plants. So we'll use their results for comparison purposes. Firstly, plant weight. The drip system grew the biggest plant by far, but as we mentioned, it was much slower to flower. Unfortunately, because it ran out of water, the deep water culture tomato didn't make it to the end. Next on to yield. The aeroponic fog-based system gave us both the largest and greatest quantity of fruit. Perhaps the most surprising result here is the fact that the crack key was second best. Given the simplicity and low cost of a crack key setup, it really does seem to pack a punch well above its weight. We also recorded the water nutrient solution temperatures for each system. And as a reminder, these were all sitting in the same room and sitting side by side. What you'll notice here is that the aeroponic system was very warm. This is due to the heat emitted by the electronic fogger. Meanwhile, the DWC system with the bubbler was by far the coolest. This is because that constant evaporation of water that we were forcing is an endothermic reaction, meaning it absorbs heat. The other major differences in these systems as they re relate to water use. The DWC with the bubbler consumed the most water by far, um, and that was followed by the drip system. The cracky consumed the least water, but it was really close to the aeroponics. Um, this makes sense because the crack is passive and it's not really forcing the air out and with the aeroponics uh, the vaporized water is able to then condense back into the system so it kind of recirculates in that sense. So if overall cost and maintenance are not a constraint, you're likely to get the best results from an aeroponic based system. However, in terms of bang for your buck, ease of setup and use, and the fact there are no moving parts, 
the Cracky method is hard to beat. So I hope this video has been a useful overview. Don't forget to head on over and check out our other video that explains the science behind these four systems and more. If you'd like to learn more about hydroponics, gardening, and growing your own food, then don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below with questions or suggestions for future videos. That's all for now. Happy gardening, guys.